Computerized Start is brought to you by my awesome patrons on Patreon. And by your tips and memberships on Coffee. These and other channel supporters make my live streams possible. You too can become a channel supporter with tiers starting at just $1. And as always, thank you for all your support, including sharing, chatting, liking, and subscribing. Now roll that famous logo animation! Good evening and welcome back to Computerized Start Live. I am your host, Justin D. Morgan, and it is Thursday night. Do you know where your Mac is? Well, I know where at least one of them is, or at least the logic board, because it's on my workbench. But I also see that I have Thomas Armstrong in the chat. Welcome. Looks like Thomas is the only one here. But that's fine. Everyone else probably thought I'd be fashionably late, and guess what? Nope, I was not. <laughs> hey, KMac Vintage, welcome. All right, we have at least one of the, the Mac streamers in the house. All right. Well, what do I have tonight? I have this absolutely lovely Macintosh 2CI. Ah, oh, and Thomas has his pet. And I'm pretty sure that would be the Commodore pet nearby. Well, I have this lovely Mac 2 CI here. It has mm, just a, a little bit of a little bit of damage here and other potential damage. And I think now is as good a time as any to get started on it. So hopefully my equipment will play nicely tonight. So I was trying to find my power adapter, and I don't know where I set it. I put it somewhere creative after I cleaned it. I thought I brought it downstairs, but, hmm, I don't know what I did with it. All right, hopefully I didn't miss a memo that there was something important going on tonight. But at least I have replaced the headlights in my car because, well... They were, they were out. I have to admit, I probably got more use out of them than I should have, but, so I guess I can't complain about having to spend $80 on new bulbs, but I have a feeling the new ones won't last as long as the old ones. So, anyways, I think the first thing to do is to get this oscillator off the board, clear the vias for the crystal, and uh, maybe see if I can't also get some of this battery corrosion off the board. Because basically, I think the first thing I want to do... Hey, Retro Tech Chris, welcome! So, all right. Yep, we'll get this off the board, clear the vias, get a new oscillator, get a new crystal installed. And I'd kind of like to see if I can't get maybe a bit of this corrosion off. Because I am going to then full send this board. And see what happens. And by full send, I mean I'm going to power it up and see what happens. Because quite honestly, I'm curious. But I do know that it won't do anything without uh, that oscillator. And I'm pretty sure that crystal's probably required too. Because computers generally don't like it when their real time clock is non functional. I mean, it might work without that crystal. The real time clock might be really unhappy, but it's so close. I might as well. All right, so let me make sure I know which pads that is. So without further ado. The crystal is going to be these two here. And I have a feeling I'm probably going to have to add some solder, but let me just let me just see what happens with uh 
some solder flux here. Extra flux and wick. While I am uh, trying to get solder out, I will remind everyone that I still have my coffee goal for rescuing computers and supplies. And I may have already made an offer on a compact. Don't know if it'll be accepted, but I've made an offer on one. I'm sure uh, Retro Tech Chris will be uh, very curious to know what it is. Actually, uh, maybe I should disallow his guess because he would probably guess correctly. <laughs> hey, Frodo Jedi, welcome! Just trying to uh, do some minimum repairs on this board so I can try to get an idea of how bad it might be. Um, oh, that's lovely. Well, at least I saw that there before I jammed my soldering iron down on it. I had a uh, coin saw battery that fell into my solder, uh, cleaner, soldering iron cleaner thingy. Not sure when it fell, but at least I saw it because... It was right where I normally jam my soldering iron. Wow, okay. The, um, yeah, lithium smoke. Okay, this solder is, uh, wanting to be really, uh... Oh, there we go. The solder on the bottom of the board is not wanting to melt at all. There we go. I think I'm making inroads now. Could probably add some flux to that. No, that would not be good. I mean, I do know uh, what those batteries do when you apply too much heat to them for too long. After all, when I worked at the computer shop as a high school student, my boss was trying to replace the soldered on CR2032 battery in a computer. And he was doing it by trying to solder on a new 2032 battery. And let's just say that it went pop. Luckily, no one was injured. Yeah, look at that patina on that crystal oscillator. Yes, it's lovely patina. I'm going to sell it as a, uh, a, um, okay, what, what's the keyword they use on the home improvement shows now for, uh, the items that have the, um, patina on them? Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm going to list it on eBay, and uh, that, that'll be my description, that it's, um, whatever, yeah, it adds value. Uh, oh, and Thomas, this has already been through the ultrasonic cleaner. It didn't make a bit of difference with that oscillator. If 
it says anything, the, uh, I think the solder in this area of the board is like, so oxidized that uh, I think I'm going to have to see if I can go <laughs> go to uh, low melt solder because I am uh, the only solder I am wicking is the new solder that did not mix with what's in there oh no actually I cleared one of the vias. Oh, maybe I was making headway. Okay, well, let me try from the other side of the board for this other one. I actually uh, cleared one of the two vias. So maybe this other one will... Uh... It's just taking a lot of new solder. There we go. Now maybe that one will cooperate. Uh, Thomas says it will work as long as the rust isn't inside. Oh, uh, there's also one other thing that's required. It will work fine as long as the rust isn't inside and as long as the um, one or more of the legs have not dissolved. Uh, spoiler alert, two of the legs are completely gone. That's why I got to replace it before I can try to do anything. All right, I uh, I think I got the vias clear of the old solder finally, and I don't think I caused any damage that wasn't already there. I also dropped something on the floor here. Let me grab it. There we go. Where did I? Oh, that's right. I moved stuff for cleaning. Oh, well, I'm just using this other thing of isopropyl alcohol. Thomas says only two legs need to work. And it is Sorcerer Stan, which I have, I have solved the mystery of the Sorcerer. Sorcerer Stan's username refers to the Exidy Sorcerer. Now there's a computer I hadn't heard of, or at least had forgotten about. And if it weren't for how much those go for these days, I might want one. <laughs> uh, so I'll just have to temper my expectations but yeah it seems like a cool computer of course a lot of them seem cool oh okay I think that was one of the ooh look at ooh look at how nasty this board is it's been ultrasonically cleaned and yet yeah, it is like still Luckily, I have plenty of cotton swabs because I'm going to need them. Yeah, smash that like button. If you like when uh, people even just try to repair these computers that some would otherwise just throw away. I mean, after all, this could be a three year repair. A three-year repair. <laughs> Not going to say where I might have stolen that from. All right. Yeah, I'm about to do some more cleaning there. All right, let me... Uh... All right, Thomas Armstrong would like a CompuColor 2. That sounds familiar, but I probably have to 
All right, so I believe the legs of this oscillator that are still intact are... Well, let me see if I can figure out where they are on the bottom of the board. I think they're the wrong two pins. I'm having trouble seeing where the... Oh, there they are. Hey, Jack68K. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if those are the correct two pins that are still connected, but... Hey, Joe. Welcome. Well, since I don't... Since I don't feel lucky, I'm just going to go ahead and remove that oscillator, and maybe I'll I'll test it later to see see if it actually still works. Let's see here. I am going to try low melt solder and see if it remove uh, does this any faster. Actually, Joe, I have a question about your, um, was it the, um, Apple TTL to RGB converter or RGB to TTL or your, your video converter for the Apple three that also works with the 2GS and the Apple 2E, um, I guess 80 column card. Do you know if the RAM works? RGB card supplies the necessary 5 volts power to use that adapter. Um... You know, that solder is so oxidized that... Wow, that is some really oxidized solder. Well, I don't have a VGA adapter for the Ramworks 2, but I do have one of the uh, Ramworks RGB cards. I mean, yeah, I guess I could connect the CGA cable. I got to look at my Apple IIe and remember which of the punch outs are missing from it. Because there's one, I'm going to use one of the missing punch out openings for the video cable for my Ramworks RGB card. I don't have an Apple RGB monitor. I just have the RGB card. I bought it so I could use an RGB to HDMI and get better video capture from the Apple IIe. The Apple RGB monitor. Yeah, the Apple VGA V2 projects well, but it's, um... Well, I don't know.
It was going to cost me more to build one of those than it did than I got the RGB card for, or almost. Okay, maybe I did spend a little more on the RGB card, but... My Apple IIe is quickly becoming a period-correct computer. Uh, I'll have to look at which board it is, but it, it came with two cables, one of which I believe is a 15-pin cable for the Apple TTL monitor, and one is the 9-pin cable for uh, a CGA monitor. So I don't think that's the color link board. But I'll have to check. Maybe if I get... Also, does anyone have a trick for uh, removing solder that's like super oxidized? Or you just have to be uh, patient and persistent? Yeah, I think it's the digital prism board. Maybe I'll pull it out here in a minute since you're here and I asked the question. Luckily, I just have it down here. It's on the shelf sitting on top of my Apple IIe, so it's easy to get to. Oh, I see a potential broken trace on this 2CI. Yep. Yes, it, it smells wonderful. No, not really. It almost just smells like dirt. Probably because it's rust. Of some I, I don't know. I don't know what solder mix they used on the two CI. It's gonna be leaded, I'm sure.
Hey, Dave and Eric, welcome. Wow, this solder is so oxidized. I don't know if you can see it, but the solder that's on my soldering iron, like, is in a ball and is repelled from the solder joint. That is how oxidized this solder is. It, like, wants to have nothing to do with this solder. All right. I don't think I might have gotten one of the vias for it clear. Well, not really that clear. Hmm. All right. Uh, let me continue the... Uh All right, well, let's see. Hey, Retro Techie. All right. Yes, the solder on this board is, in this area is like really oxidized. Hmm. All right. Okay. Let's see. Well, I thought I had one of the vias clear, but looks like.
Kinda looks like I'm going nowhere with trying to remove this. You know, I may just have to see, I may just have to try testing this board with that oscillator on it, because, and hope that's the correct two pins, because I'm not making any headway on trying to remove it. None at all. Try blowing it out. You mean hot air or like my non-existent air compressor? Yeah, it looks crusty and uh, crusty and. The solder is just, the solder is not coming out. Compress air and I, yeah. Air and iron. Oh. I have an air can. I don't think my air cans have enough air. I mean, you mean one of these and my iron? I shouldn't use this because it's uh, flammable. Well, it says it's flammable, so... Well... Oh, heat solder and then quick shot. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll see what this does. It's not really doing anything. I don't think that did anything. Too slow? Well, uh, it might be that I don't have one of these cans that has enough air pressure in it. Oh, okay. Well, I have one... One new can. This stuff's so expensive, I don't buy many of them. They're like $6 a can. Hi, Ryan. I had the fun and joy of replacing the headlights in my Forester today. I like how the owner's manual, the section starts with, This can be hard, so take it to your Subaru dealership. Which I translate to mean what they really mean to say is the National Transportation Safety Administration made us write this. So we're going to give you the bare minimum instructions. We really want you to take it to your Subaru dealership. Because then we make money.
I do not have a small tip on the iron because every time I put a small tip on the iron, I get chastised for having a small tip on the iron. Plus, I don't think I have any small tips, because everyone seemingly tells me to use the large tips. Oh, I have small tips for the... for the new solder station I can't use, because I don't have a handle for it. Okay, I've got a, I think I've got a small tip, but we'll have to wait because the other reason I don't like changing tips in the iron is because I have to let it cool down. At least some, because it's not really designed to hot swap the tips. Uh, yes, Jack, the leads from the oscillator are... Theoretically, still in those holes. I mean, the oscillator is still in these two holes. Oh, hold on. I gotta, I gotta let this cool down. Because uh, the handle wants to turn apart, and I don't have anything handy to grip the plastic part of the handle to keep it from turning. So, cool down penalty so I can change soldering tips. Which is a great segue for my, the, uh, to uh, mention that I do have a coffee, and one of the supplies I wish I had is a handle for my new solder station, because then I could use these uh, lovely T15 tips that are designed to just pull out while they're hot. Theoretically. I, I think I even have the, uh, oh yeah, I even have the uh, safety. Oh, well, maybe this will... Well, maybe I can use that to help me remove this. Okay. Uh, when you heat them, you can you nudge them around with the end of your tweezers so the new solder mixes all around them? Uh, I can try. T15s are bigger than T12, right? I don't know. I don't know that I, I don't have... I don't have T12s. T15s have the heater... The heating element in the tip. I have what I have, because that's what I have. I make no apologies for not having the, the like, really expensive systems that all the fanboys say you need. For example, I don't have a Metcal, and I don't have a, um, what's the other expensive one that, like, everyone says you need? Not, not Hacko, but like there's, I think, one other like really expensive brand. Don't have either of those. I'm sure they're nice. Don't have one. All 
All right, I am trying to get the old uh, tip out of the... Um... Okay. Uh, yeah, I, okay, yeah, yeah, Joe, I think that's true. They're the same thing, I think, now that you say that. Yeah, so I guess the T-15 has... I guess the T-15 has more thermal mass than the, um, what, the T-18s? Yeah, when I, well, when I order T-15s from Hacko, I get T-15s, so I guess T-15s are for the U.S. market because Americans like bigger numbers? I don't know. Or maybe Hacko USA still has stock at T-15 and they're switching everyone to T-12. I don't know. I mean, why else would Ford have an F-150, an F-250, and an F-350? I guess it's because Americans like larger numbers. Buy our F-350, it's 200 higher than our F-150. Nope, not fixed yet, Retro Techie. <laughs> Hi, Francois, welcome. Um, uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're on a, a, a penalty because I'm, I have to let the tip of the soldering iron cool completely down because... Well, here's my problem. And this is probably where someone in the chat is probably going to say, dude, you need a new soldering iron tip. But anyways, the tip I was using is kind of stuck in the part that I have to put back on the iron. Like, really stuck. In fact, it's stuck in a way. I may have to put this back on the iron and heat it up and then try to get it out. But, yeah. Um. Yeah, I need the Benford, the Benford 9000 soldering iron station. The one where I'm pretty sure that Tim Allen just... Uh, wired the whole thing up to 480 volt three phase it'll make the the power in the entire neighborhood dim when you turn it on and of course it'll just like catch catch itself on flame uh, on fire like as soon as you start using it but yeah hey sad mac 356 oh good okay this is cooled down enough for me to uh try to Try to separate the tip from the handle. And yeah, yeah, Mac 84 has one of those that glows red. Yeah. Well, since it didn't catch fire, I think it was the Benford 8000. I think they have to actually catch fire before it's the Benford 9000. Uh, yeah, Thomas, I actually order my Hacko tips directly from Hacko. <laughs> um, I guess I could order them from Mauser or DigiKey, too. Um, in fact, I gotta I got place a Mauser order, so I may, uh, I may just add a Hacko. Yeah, I gotta... Okay, I think I'm going to have to use the tip that's in my solder that was in my soldering iron to start with because uh it, it's oxidized to it's oxidized and like seemingly welded itself to the this piece and that I have to put back on the iron <laughs> Yeah, um, so I'm going to have to use this tip. I don't have a choice. That, that this is the only soldering iron handle I have.
So it looks like I will be placing an order with Hacko USA. Because while I think I can get the tips from Mauser, I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm going to have to order the replacement part from Hacko. Because I'm pretty sure Mauser will charge even more than Hacko. Well, actually, at this point, I'd just like to buy a handle for my FX. Buy the handle for my FX951 because. Uh, yeah, I'm, let me see if I can work some fresh solder around these pins. That's what I've been trying to do. Obviously, I got to. I think some of my recent problems is probably because this soldering iron tip is worn out and <sighs> okay well I, I cannot change solder tips sorry I tried the the it's like I can't get these two pieces apart I've I've been trying to get some fresh solder in but Oh, well, that's lovely. Well. Well, it looks like I am. Yeah, I've been, uh. Hmm, lovely. And I got something on the soldering iron tip because yeah, something's burning off of it. Well, all right, looks like I'm going to uh, well, probably have to order a new tip sooner than later. I would buy a, a KSGER except for two things. Number one, I have a Hacko FX951. And number two, how do I know which one's the actual real one? Because it seems like there's so many clones of the clone. I don't, um, it's kind of one of those, I don't, why, why do, yeah, why do I buy the clone when I have the actual station? But, <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that would let me use the, the T15 tips. It's like, I have a Hacko 951. It's supposedly, like, re recap them. Oh, there's the third reason why I, I haven't bought one. It's because everyone sees you, tells you you got to do work on them as soon as you get it. And I'm like, why do I want to buy something that requires repairs as soon as you get it? Q, Q uh, Ryan from Everything is Broken Garage uh, chiming in is like, well, you know a car requires repairs as soon as you get it. Okay, I'll, I'll, well, okay, considering that um, I believe this soldering iron is not going to last, this tip is not going to last another live stream because... Um, it looks like it might not even last this live stream. I don't know why it, it looks like the tip is, yeah, okay. All right, well, I guess I may end up ordering one of those just because I've got a soldering, a soldering iron problem and, okay. Not only can I not replace the tip on this, but it looks like, yeah, I don't even know if this is going to work for tonight. I apologize in advance, because, well, I didn't realize this tip was uh, in, in such bad shape. I don't have a Radio Shack iron. I mean, I used to have one a long, long, long time ago, but it...
I don't remember what happened to it. it I don't have it anymore. It, well, it actually might have been a, one of those old Weller soldering. Oh, that's right. It was kind of, it was one of the ones that looks more like a gun than an iron, and it was just so impractical. Especially for, um, like, every time I wanted to do a little quick something with soldering, it's like, it was so impractical because it was obviously not, I mean, you could only get the one type of tip for it. I mean, I, I probably got rid of it like 15 years ago. It was probably before YouTube existed when I got rid of it. Okay. If it has a temperature control, it's too good. Well, this station supposedly has a temperature control, but honestly, it seems like it only has two temperatures. Too warm or too cold. Or, I guess it'd be too hot or too cold. Well, anyways. If you want to help me get a new soldering station, I'll, uh, well... You know where the coffee link is. It's in the description. Might have to do that before I ultimately make a successful offer on a compact. Probably now realizes I'm going to see a pop-up notification on my phone that says, The seller has accepted your offer! Actually, no, I suspect I, uh, I lowballed the seller and they're not going to probably accept my offer. Yeah, I, knocked, I took like 25% off their asking price for a, the compact I'm making an offer on because they, uh, they plugged it in and it had no power, so, and they, they admitted that it doesn't have the hard drive caddy, so there's already a piece I'm going to have to get. Plus, since they it didn't have power, they couldn't power it up. So I don't even know if the screen works or if it still has this processor in it that it, uh, the model number indicates it should have. So I was like, okay, I'm on, I'm on knock 25% off of what they're asking because eBay guilted me when I tried to offer them like, uh, I think I think I, my first my gut instinct was to offer them sixty percent of what they were asking, but I guess eBay talked me down to somewhere closer to like seventy five percent. And that was mainly just based on the fact of I'm I'm really I'm the one taking the risk because someone could have swapped parts out of it and since they can't power it up to show that it still has in it what the model number says it should have in it plus I got to get a hard drive caddy although I well actually I guess I have a hard drive caddy but it has a hard drive in it that might be too big for this model but yeah I'm like yeah, I kind of wanted to lowball them because I'm like, I'm the one taking the risk. Really, because if someone swapped the processor out for another one 
at some point, well, I don't know that I really have much recourse because they've accurately described what they have. I mean, the screen looks fine, but still. Oh, I think maybe I got one of the pins. Nope. Never mind. Okay, well, let's try another round. And, and Thomas, I see the link you sent me. I'll um I'll take a look at it after the stream. I I just need something that's reliable and not going to turn glowing orange like Steve's. I'm hoping that a firmware update fixes that. Hmm. All right, I'm uh, kind of getting really concerned with how long it's taking to try to get these vias clean. I won't lie, I'm really concerned that... <sighs> By the time I get the solder out, I'm going to realize that damage has been done. Ultimately, maybe it'll be damage that was caused by the leaking battery, but... Ah, so I just have to set the uh, no glowing iron tip setting in the software. Got it. Okay, well, well, the good news is that I uh, got the oscillator off. Bad news is was because I the uh, pins were stressed. Well, I guess now I can get to this side of the board. Now, let me see if maybe if I. Maybe if I try applying some of the heat on this side, I'll... Maybe it'll help.
All right. Oh, don't disable the safety. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I guess I'd forgotten that Steve said why it happened. Yeah, I probably won't do something like that, unless the safety setting is not named properly. I mean, if it... Uh, I can try to put a lead through, but especially now that I don't have the uh, oscillator in the way, but I don't know that, it, well, That'll require me to find a lead that's strong enough to do that. Actually, that one's almost out. Oh, actually, I have some uh, desoldering needles that I don't normally use because I haven't had good luck with them. Well, I think I got one of the legs out, but I don't think it was my desoldering needle that did it. Okay, I think that one just fell out on its own, too. Okay, I got two out. And in both cases, they just fell out on their own. Well, uh, well, I mean, I've got my hot air station on my bench, but it's not plugged in at the moment. I got tired after the last stream of how many cords I had tangled on my desk, and so I unplugged a bunch of stuff, and 
I haven't bothered to plug a bunch of stuff back in because I'm still detangling. Oh. Um, I think I got one where if I can pull it out with my, I can use my tweezers to pull it out because I've almost got it out. There we go. Three's out. I think I got three out. Uh, okay, maybe I only have two out. I sure thought I had three out. Uh, component lead. Component lead. Let me see. Component lead. No, it's only two. All right, I gotta add some more solder. Flux and or well, more flux. All right, well, I got a component lead out, but Let's see, that's three. This one out. No. Okay, I sure thought I had three out. Oh. Nope. I still only have two out. How in the world do I seemingly have all sorts of pins falling out, and I still only have two free? Unless there's solder in one of these vias. Alright, hold please while well, I just really quickly see if this is just solder blocking the via. Alright. Alright, giving it the light test, I have... Okay, I can see light through two of the vias. Great. So, despite the fact that I seemingly am having pins falling out, I still only have two free vias, and it looks like there's pins in the other two. Alright, so let me... Okay, I think I might have uh, got... I might have that one out now. Finally. Maybe. Three. No. Wait. No. Okay. What's up with that one? Okay. I got one.
I don't, I don't have a, an appropriate hammer handy. Let me add some solder because... I think the problem's bigger than, uh, I think the problem's actually bigger than, uh, there being pins in the vias. I'm not sure there's vias in the vias. Oh, wait. Okay, maybe that one still has a pin in it. Oh, you know, maybe I know why there's still pins in these vias. Maybe I'm, like, not getting the whole pin out each time. Sure enough, I have two, two vias that are nice and clear. And I've got two that look like there's still... One of them looks like there's still part of a pin in it. And one One, uh, uh, one of the vias, I can't tell if it's damaged or what. All right, I guess I'm just going to have to, to... all right, I guess what I'm going to do, because I, there's not much worse I can do to the board. So the two that I can't tell what's going up with them, I'm going to heat them up. And then I'm going to let the board fall because I can't do much extra damage to this board. And I'm hoping that's going to uh, cause the solder to fall out. If that's solder. Maybe the vias are just damaged. Well, ideally not flipping components, but... Alright, so I still have two free vias and two vias that are... That I, I cannot tell what's going on with them. I could try to pull the microscope out, but... I don't, um, yeah, I've got the, I've got a socket and an oscillator. I was going to try to put a socket in it, but I can't install the socket because I've got obstructed vias. Well, actually, you know, it kind of does look like there's a pin still in one of them. <sighs> Is this board, I guess this board, I, I don't know. I'm having trouble telling if, what's going on, actually. All right, let me clean the board. Well, yeah, I see solder on the mat, too, but there's no guarantee it came from this board. And there is still something in two of the vias. I 
An oscillator might require two signals, but I don't know which which of these two it requires. I have Okay. All right, let me see if I can't get an idea of what's going on under the oscilloscope. Well, well, Jeremy, I have to pick, I have to pick what I fix. And actually, I don't know if Claris would actually help in this case. All right, I do not, um, okay, so there's, there's one of the oscillator vias. Okay, so that's the one near, I think that's one of them. It's the one near C137. No. I'm too close to the edge of the board. That's, I think, one of the battery vias. There we go, C134. Five. Uh, Jeremy, I can't solder to what's in the vias. What's in the vias will not take solder. All right, so that appears to be not a via, although that also is not connected to anything on this uh, this side of the board. This one, I still see part of a via there, that uh, there's something in there. All right, we'll have to look the other side of the board. I think that's actually one of the two that's, uh, let me, oh yeah, so that, that one right there, hold on. That one right there is actually one of the two that's open. Which is convenient. Real convenient. Because that's not actually connected on that side of the board. That one there is still clogged. Let's see. This one... I think it's that one right... The one on the right... Right before R87, I think that's the via for the oscillator, and that one is, I think the other one that's free. Yeah, those ones are all clear. So, I, let's see here. So, whichever one that the oscillator goes in, I think it's that one, like, there in the middle. That one's clear, and then... That one there, well, that looks like there's still solder there, but it also looks like there's a broken trace. It looks like I'm going to have to do a repair anyways, but it does look like there's still solder in there. All right, so it does look like there is... A broken trace. I may have to check the schematic because it sure looks like that via goes to three different places. That is definitely a broken trace and quite honestly it might even be broken there too. I'll have to scrape that away. Ooh! And that looks like a via that's gone. Oh, that's gonna be fun. All right, I have to get, I have to get the, um, okay, so, which of these vias do I have to clear? All right, hold please while I take a look at the schematic.
No saying no via. Well, yeah, I, I didn't say it was going to be an easy repair, and I didn't say I was sane for trying it. Okay, hold please while I check the the uh, data sheet. Well, okay, Mac. Um, I think I picked the challenging board. It may be out of my league. Might be out of my the tools that I have working tonight. Okay, so the uh, so the fifty megahertz oscillator is connected with pins two, three, and four. Okay, so pin one, which is one of the pins that's clear, it also is a pin that there's no via. It. Okay, so pin one, there's no via, so I got nothing to solder to there, but pin one is not connected in the schematic. Pin two, looks like there's solder still in the via, and there's several broken traces, if I'm looking at the pin correctly. No. That doesn't look, that looks like pin 3, given all its connections. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to tell which is pin, okay. Well, unfortunately, Sloopy asked for this board if I couldn't fix it, so... Okay, so I know this is pin one because of the notch on the silk screen. I sure thought this was pin two. Pin three and pin four. According to the schematic, pin two is connected to five volts. I'm trying to see if there's enough here for me to determine if that's actually the 5 volt pin. There's a lot of damage in that area. Pin 3 is connected to a bunch of important stuff, I'm sure. Okay, I guess this is probably pin 3 here. Yep, pin 2. Pin three. So pin four is ground. And if that's ground, it's probably connecting to ground on an inner ground plane. Meter the ground. Uh, okay, let's see. Unfortunately, this is the part of the live stream where I gotta not set the board on my metal workbench or I'll have all sorts of fun. Okay, let's see here. So if I'm counting pins right, I think this is pin four. And 
and I'm reading 15 ohms to ground. Okay, let me check these other pins. Maybe I miscounted the pins. Is, is this... Oh, well that's actually zero, that's actually... Wait a minute. Is that pin four? Because that's actually zero ohms to ground right there. And that's zero ohms to ground. Wait a minute. How can both of those be ground? Well, maybe both of those, maybe pins two, maybe pins two and four are both ground? Okay, can someone, um, yeah, that's the master clock oscillator, so. Yeah, I'm measuring two of these that are going to ground, and they're not the two I expected. I sure thought this was pin, someone please check. Is this, okay, this has to be pin one. There's the notch. I thought you counted these by pin one, two, three, four. But when I do that, it doesn't make sense. I guess I could pull up. Well, of course, I'm logged out of my Mauser account, so... All right, 50 megahertz oscillator. Let me just... Let me pull up the part I think I ordered. Hold, please. Passive standard clock oscillator. Package type, let's see, what is this package? I guess that is a full size. Apply filters. I suspect I bought the one that was $3.15, not the one that was, well, it should have the same pinout. Okay, what is the pinout? I am going to double check the pinout. Oh, that's convenient. Okay. Pin one. Okay, I'm looking at the data sheet for an oscillator. It may not be the exact one I ordered. So pin one is no connect. I'm pretty sure pin one is the one that has the dot on it. Pretty sure pin one is the one that has a notch. So I think that's pin one. Okay. The data sheet says pin seven is case ground. And pin seven is on the same side as pin one. So this is, must be pin seven. However, the Apple schematic calls them pins one, two, three, and four. Also, the Apple schematic shows pin four is going directly to ground. So I have to assume this is pin four on, and I, I'm hoping you can see that. So I'm, I'm thinking this is pin four on the Apple schematic, but it's pin seven on the oscillator schematic, which means this is pin eight on the oscillator data sheet. Pin 8 is marked as output, so this must be pin 3 on the Apple schematic, which means this is going to be plus 5 volts DC, a pin 14 on the oscillator data sheet, and this must be pin 2 on the schematic, pin 2 is... 5 volts. So if I turn this board around, 
There should be five volts on this pin. This one should be not be ground, because if this one's connected to ground, then we're in trouble. This is connected to ground. We have a short somewhere, and probably it's probably somewhere other than here. And this one is the output. So actually, neither of these two should be connected to ground. Okay. One of, let's see, the one that's 5 volts is going to have a 15 ohm connection to ground because of Apple's weird design. So, this one should be 14 ohms to ground. This one should not, probably should be a fairly high impedance to ground because that's the output. This one should be a direct short to ground. All right, so let me see. Let me see what we've got on the other side. Okay. So. Okay. So the ground point I'm picking is the, the shield on, uh, well, I'll pick the SCSI connector because I'm pretty sure. Okay, so this one is marked as ground. All right, and that has zero ohms to ground. This one's 5 volts, and that's 16 ohms to ground. Okay, so I think that is the 5 volt rail. This one's no connect, and that looks like no connect. This one is the output, and it is also 0 ohms to ground. So, there is a short somewhere around this section of the board. Which is actually the complete opposite of what I expected. So, did I create a short? Okay, now it's possible the short is because I've, there's a, I've created a solder blob somewhere. And now let me go back to where I can see the chat, because you all have probably been screaming at me. Okay. Okay, one of the pins is going to 5... 5 volts. If you wonder why I called 5 volts 16 ohms, it's because uh, there, there's a I can't explain it. There, um, these, this, these style boards that have this uh, power connector have like somewhere between 12 and 16 ohms between 5 volts and ground. I can't explain it but I have confirmed by asking on Tinker Different that, yeah, um, apparently known working boards have that low of a resistance between 5 volts and ground. So, okay, whatever. Um, Jeremy says the schematic is incorrect. I would contend the pinout on the schematic is incorrect, but the destinations are correct. Uh, it's the Bowmark schematic. So the Bowmark schematic has the wrong pinout for the oscillator. Because that is not pins 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yeah, it's a dip 14. Yeah, it's the ECS part, I think, is what I got. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've got, a, there's a, I've got a short on the output of that oscillator, and I've got to try to figure out where it is. I, I, I guess I'm about to try to desolder a little more, because I may have a solder blob. Um, yeah, um, pin 3 signal is the one that goes to R83 right there by it. Yes. So. Well, there's a problem. R83 is missing on this board. I'm fairly certain looking at the diagram that R83 should probably be on this board, but yeah, R83 is like missing. Quite honestly, it doesn't look like it was ever there.
<laughs> hey, hey, Doc. Yeah, I'm, I'm having fun with, um, I, yeah, I, d um, I wish I had my, wor uh, well, my other non-working 2CI board, but it's currently not in my possession. Because I would like to look at it and see if it has R83, because R83 on this doesn't even look like it was on this board. Because the solder looks like R81, which maybe is also missing. Possible those two got knocked off, but those are, honestly, R83 and R81 are two weird resistors to get knocked off, and the others are spared. Because, well... Okay. Oh, I didn't. Okay. It's hard to, I will, it's hard to, it was kind of hard to tell because the schematic is behind my, the boom arm for my microphone. I didn't really, I didn't see that there was a, a dash, dashed line. It just, okay. So. Maybe for different clock speeds, yeah. Okay, I gotta pull the oscillator data sheet up. Okay. So, pin. So, this is pin one. Make sure. All right, so that's pin one. Which means this is pin seven, which should be a ground. Which means this was pin eight. Pin eight is the output. And I was seeing a short on pin eight. So let me make sure that I don't have a tiny solder blob here. I would say there's a, all right. Also see if I can get this via read. That's ground. I mean, okay. So if the, if the ground via gets destroyed, I mean, I can, I can fix that easily. I just tie it to ground. And then four, pin 14 is 5 volts, which is this one here. I guess that's also somewhat easy to remedy. The thing is, I think, I think it's connected to 5 volts on an inner trace. But I mean, I can still tie it to 5 volts, but it won't be pretty. I don't know which, Thomas, I don't know if it's pulling it high or low. The schematic, the schematic doesn't say in words. I'm sure it says in uh, the way this, here, let, uh, let me, let me put the link in the chat here in a moment. Unless someone else beats me to putting the link to the Bowmark schematics in the chat. Yes, for anyone just joining and wondering why in the world I'm spending so much time trying to get these vias free, it's because this is the main oscillator, and without this, nothing happens. And this is why I... I'm trying, well, it actually readily came off after some 
soldering because, well, it really didn't have that great of a connection to all four of its legs. Two of them were, like, not connected. And it kind of looks like three of the four legs were uh, rust. All right, well, I'll see. Oh, counting to pin 107, that's going to be fun. All right, I may just have to put the oscillator. I don't know. I may just have to, like, bodge the oscillator on. Okay, let me... Okay, I will see if I can find pin 107. Unfortunately, for you all to see what I'm doing... I have to put the the board the wrong way for me to easily find pin 107. But I do it for you all. Also, I need to find my very sharp probes because that is the only way I will be able to touch pin 107. And that will require me to figure out what I did with them because, well, you can't necessarily see it because my workbench is still a mess. I did try to clean my workbench a little bit. I'm sure the doc knows the struggle there of trying to clean your workbench and still be able to find everything. Right, doc? Oh, here we go. I know bodging's so dodgy, but so so is this the vias for this oscillator. It the the battery really did a number on it. And and for the record I bought this as a parts board, but someone uh, put the idea in my head I could actually fix it. It may still be a parts board. This may not be my easy path to getting my 2CI back up and running. I may just have to see if I can't get the person that has my 2CI board to work on it. Well, Joe, if I thought dunking this board in liquor would fix it, because the saying does say liquor is quicker. The interesting thing is that seems to be about the only part of the saying that stays the same. But um, if I thought that would fix this quicker, I would. Oh. Sorry, the ABC store is closed 48 minutes ago. Never mind. OK, let's see if I can find pin 107. Now, this, I believe, is pin 97, 98. 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107. I think that's 107 right there. Give or take one pin. The two CI is better, Jeremy. And let's see. 
which pin of the oscillator did we say that should be connected to? No connect. Five volts. Is that the output? Well, I believe, oh, there we go. Oh, wait, but I think that's the five. Oh, that's the ground connection. Hold on, let me go back in the chat, see what I'm trying to. UK 11 pin 107. UK 11 pin 107, okay. Well. Yeah, I don't think it's reading it. It's one of these pins. It's not reading. We have a broken. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Did I completely miscount? It's connected to that pin right there, but that's not pin 100 and... Oh, wait. I must have miscounted. Yeah, it's connected. I miscounted. Okay. I miscounted, it's connected. Um, it was easier for me to count up from 97 than to count down from 120. Because I think it's slightly closer to pin 97. Okay, so there is a connection because it is, because um, I see the trace going right here. But that pin also, I think, goes to, oh, I did say I would put the Bowmark schematic link in the chat. So that should also go to... Oh, wait, that would also go to the resistor at R83. And that, I think, is the broken trace. So maybe there's not even a connection there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is pin three. Is that, that's, well, I, I know which ones are, no, pin three. Oh, that's, that's, this is pin three. Ah, which is actually connected to that side of R83, which is not populated, because there's... Yeah, okay, so that's pin 3. This is pin 2, which is... That's right, pin 2 is 5 volts. Okay. 
Okay, which one's five volts on the power connector? Okay, believe it or not, it's got a connection to five volts. And pin four is... Hey, Sloopy. I don't know how fun it really is because, I don't know, there seems to be a disconnect between the, the schematics in my brain tonight. Okay, so according to the oscillator pinout, this is no connect. This is, and I'm doing it this way because this is case ground. Yeah, okay. This is the output, which I know is connected, and this is 5 volts. Which I think is... Wait a minute. Which I will have to double check which pin that is on the power connector. No, it's, this is not a um, problem exists between um, computer and keyboard. This is like a problem exists between schematic and brain. Okay, so it looks like if I can get these vias cleared enough to not have to bodge an oscillator which seems like a bad idea. Then, and I've been trying to do this for two hours now. It seems like I might actually have a connection. I just gotta get these vias cleared. All right, I've tried No more Mr. Nice Guy. Well, all right. I will try Claris. Claris has not been working for me. I will turn the temperature up on Claris. Maybe if I turn the temperature up, it'll work better. Hey, I, uh, I, 380386SX. Button for punishment error. Yeah, this is this is what I get when I buy cheap things on Mercari. Although, for the record, the only reason why I'm not calling this a purchase that I regret is because I bought this as a parts board. So it is living up to the description of being a parts board. I only decided to repair it because I was convinced that it looked repairable. Yeah. All right, while I wait for uh, Clarice to warm up, I am going to see maybe if the uh, curious Oh, okay. Oh. Retro Tech Chris, are you there in the chat? <laughs> well, if Retro Tech Chris is there or for anyone else, 
Let, let's see if I can very... Let's see. I don't think there's anything here that will... Yeah. Nothing on this my screen has my address on it, so... Okay, there we go. That was it. That was my hint of what I might have just bought on eBay, the, the place where I buy the things that I later regret. Apparently the seller of that laptop accepted my offer of $34.99. Plus shipping. So hopefully it actually has the processor in it that uh, the model number would indicate and also the screen that the model number would indicate. Ah, Thomas is here, he thinks. Oh, that's right. Are you at work, Thomas? Yeah, I, I win. Is that the LTE from Green Bay? Um, was that the LTE from Green Bay? Uh, oh yeah, I should have known. They, uh, everyone was probably, uh, yes, that was the LTE from Green Bay. They wanted forty nine ninety nine for it, and I offered them thirty four ninety nine because I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess. Uh, Jeremy, it won't, that laptop won't power up. It has no hard drive in it. It also, it doesn't have the caddy in it. But it won't power up. So the seller, so the seller, that's all the information the seller has. It theoretically has the DX4 75 megahertz processor in it. But considering that it won't power up, which means the seller can't power it up. Uh, I mean, I have no way of confirming that someone didn't pull the original processor out of it. I also don't know how much RAM's in it. So, I mean, that, that's why I offered them only 35 bucks for it, even though they were asking 50. If they had more info on it to confirm that it's actually the 75 megahertz processor is still in it. Because the thing is, you can swap that processor around to other models. It doesn't even still have the processor in it. I mean, it probably does. I mean, it probably still has a processor in it. But also, uh, it does the screen work. They can't power it up. They couldn't get it to power up. Probably needs recapped. I can probably fix that part of it. But... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Uh, well, I wasn't going to drive to Green Bay to pick it up because I'm in Virginia. Uh, I'll, I'll pay them to ship at FedEx. Come on, Claris. You can do it. Okay, I think Claris is... I don't know. I don't... I don't know if Claris is actually I'm trying to think. How can I tell how hot Claris is getting without a soldering iron temperature detector? Um, okay, well, it will char wood, but I don't think that tells me much. Maybe, let me, hold on, let me, let me see if maybe the solder, the filter's clogged. I, I sure thought I replaced the filter and it still wasn't working great, but maybe I'm imagining a filter change. All right, hold please while I, uh, let me give one shot of getting Claris working and then I'll go back to 
unsuccessfully using solder braid. All right, let me find my spudger. But yeah, that that was one of the compacts I had my eye on saving. Although I will will add, I for uh, there I do have my eye on another compact, but it's actually a desktop. I also, oh, I didn't bring it downstairs probably because I was afraid I'd accidentally show my address because I haven't opened it. I did buy something to to restore. Yeah, the vacuum did sound okay. Thermocouple and multimeter. Well, I do not have a thermocouple. Okay, maybe that's not entirely correct. I probably do have a thermocouple somewhere, but there's no telling where it is in the house. Actually... Hold, oh, please. Okay, it's not the ideal thermocouple for doing this, and I guess this will, uh, I'll have to order another thermocouple to do my, uh, unnecessarily complex tea-making device at some point, but... Yes, Jeremy, uh, I do have two compact computers that you left. And I may have ordered something on eBay to fix the microcode issue on one of them and still have the same processor speed. Okay, I'm not sure how I'm going to plug this into my multimeter because I don't have a... Oh, I don't think I've got a multimeter that takes the style from a couple. No, I don't because I... Gave it away at VCF East. Because apparently I never thought I would be trying to do this. Anyways, I got a thermocouple. It's one I'd been saving for a, a tea making device. Even though SparkFun said this was not a food rated thermocouple. I was still going to make a tea making device with it. I just wasn't going to drink the tea because... I was having trouble finding a I was having trouble finding a food rated thermocouple at a price I was willing to pay. Anyone that has looked for food rated things like this will probably know that um, considering I am not a restaurant But thermocouples that are food rated are really expensive. So anyone in the restaurant business will probably know why I couldn't find one at a price I wanted to pay. Oh, um, well, that's nice, Jeremy, but I already have the perfect IO shield for my Pidium 2 computer. It's called, I found a case that had the exact IO shield needed built into it. So, therefore, yeah, I've got an IO shield for it. At least I'm not trying to repair a 450E. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the other compact I've got my eye on, and I'm, I'm trying to find the... Um, I'm trying to find my multimeter probes that go with this set here. 
so that I can I've got another set of multimeter leads around here somewhere. All right. Hold, please, while I try to find the other set of multimeter leads. Because I got a set that actually I can plug those into, and then I can connect that to the thermocouple. And then I can see if I'm actually just um, debug my soldering setup. Because I could kludge something together, but I do know this is a case where I actually would like to have as short of a connection as possible. So I need to find the leads that go with that kit. So give me a moment. Well, I try to find the other leads. All right. Get up there. Okay. They've, I, they're probably sitting on my workbench. Uh, oh, actually, here they are. I found them. I realized there wasn't... They couldn't have gone very far. In fact, they didn't go very far at all. I found them. Okay. Uh, needless to say, for anyone that... For anyone that heard me say I bought this so I could make a tea-making device, well... I won't be using this for that now, and anyways, I wasn't going to be able to drink the tea that I made with it, because this wasn't a food-grade thermocouple. It might look like one, but it, it's not. So, I was never going to be able to drink the tea that it made anyways. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. 22 degrees C. I'm holding it in my hand because I got to let the soldering. All right, so while I wait for this to warm back up, oh, actually, I can touch my soldering iron to this. So it is set to 850 degrees C, or 800, <laughs> it is set to 850 degrees Fahrenheit. I do not know what that is in degrees C. Maybe someone in the chat will be kind enough to calculate it while we wait for this to warm up. I was honestly expecting it to go up faster. But then again, there is a significant amount of thermal mass on my thermocouple. Also, I've also realized there might be a slight flaw with this plan because this entire thermocouple is metal shielded and which means I have to hold a metal part of it. I'm hoping that, well, I doubt my soldering iron can get it that hot. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Loopy. My brain, uh, my brain was not thinking correctly. You see, on my desoldering station, I could set it degrees C, uh, switch it to degrees C very easily, and it would do the math for me, but.
I'm actually not sure I'm... Okay. Also, I'm not sure I was holding the iron to the correct spot. Yeah, 850 degrees C, uh, C I think would be safety off. This is a silicon pad and actually even then it's quite warm. Two hundred and fifty five degrees C. I don't know how accurate this is going to be because the the thing is I'm I'm heating up the thermocouple, the sheath that the thermocouple is in. Oh. I'm also uh, melting. Actually, you know, I don't. Actually, maybe that wasn't silicon because it. Uh... Yes, 850 degrees C would be what Steve's solder station was set to the day it glowed red. Also known as safety's off. That's also a setting you don't want to have your holodeck set to. And also a setting that your holodeck will switch to during episodes of Star Trek. Because, of course, the holodeck has to malfunction seemingly every time it's in use. Okay, I can tell you it's getting hot, but the thing is, I'm sure that the thermal mat... Oh, yeah, I'm melting silicon pads. I think in order to really get an accurate temperature, I would need to remove the sheath from the thermocouple. And I am not sure if I can do that without damaging it. Because it is probably epoxied or something in it. All right, well, let's see if I hold this up to it what it gets to. I'm fairly sure my soldering iron is actually getting to temperature. Yeah, I think I figured that one out, Joe. It's called, otherwise there wouldn't have been a script. All 
All right. I don't think this is the right thermocouple to give me the answer I want. It's also, the end of it's probably really hot now. I should probably be careful where I set it down. Actually, I could just wave it around a bit and I'm... Well, actually, wait a minute. I could just use my multimeter to tell me when it's cooled down enough to set it down, right? <laughs> Oh, I should also couple it with the blob of solder. Of course, of course, of course. Why didn't I think of that? All right, so this is the item I want to measure. Jeremy, I think the end of the thermocouple is going to be down at the end of the probe. I don't think it's going to be in the middle. But then again, I wouldn't, I, I don't know for sure because the, data sheet I don't know where the data sheet is for it and even if there was a data sheet I don't know that it would tell you exactly where it is also I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get a blob of solder to stick to the thermocouple And that's because I think this is a stainless steel thermocouple. So although I got solder there, it's... Oh, wait. Actually, I think Joe was onto something. There we go. Well, I got solder there, but it, it's not going to actually stick. Because it's a stainless steel thermocouple. There we go. Look at that. Yes. Joe, Joe is right again. Use solder to help the thermal conductivity. So even though the solder is not like really going to stick to the stainless steel, I think it's acting as like a heat sink compound. Which means I'll be able to wipe it off easily. Well, it is heating to 350 degrees Celsius. 360. There we go. Also, I found something to set it on so I don't have to hold it. Well, that certainly should be hot enough to melt leaded solder. All right, I'll give it another little bit, and uh, then I'll I'll put the oops, sorry, lost the uh, connection. Hold please while I reconnect. There we go. Okay, I think we're thermally saturated at about three sixty to three sixty five. That should be hot enough. Try testing the temp in the middle of the barrel. Well, I actually want to know what it is at the tip. Because that's what I'm trying to melt the solder with. So, it's getting to 360 degrees C. That should be hot enough. I guess I could bump it up. Alright, now I am curious what my soldering iron is doing tonight. So... All right, let's see what the soldering iron's doing. Although, if anyone's looking at it, you pro well, actually, I don't know if you can tell, but it's 
I always put my iron on first and then the moon machine on top. I guess I could do that. Actually, if anything, I think uh, either... Actually... All right, let me try this. Let me try again. All right. Fresh spot, because I think I've... All right. All right, see you, Thomas. Actually, it kind of looks like my soldering iron might be at fault. Yeah, let me check the vacuum components, because, yeah, look at my soldering iron. It's... All right, well, let me see if I can't uh, leave it there for a moment to see where, where it might stabilize at. But it looks like it might not. It Maybe it's the problem. Let me check the filter in the Claris. Claris needs love and attention sometimes, and I sure thought. that I cleaned it and then had trouble with it, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I got something out of alignment last time I cleaned it. Maybe it's, maybe the, okay, so the filter on the station side is clean. So that's not, that's not the problem. Okay. The filter, which also confirms my suspicion that I have not been able to do much since I last serviced it. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think my soldering iron's not getting as hot as my he solder gun. Okay, let me see. Oh, well, actually it does look like maybe... Okay, looks like my soldering iron is topping out at 282. All right. Okay, so without a filter in place, it sounds fine. It does look like the filter might... Oh, okay. It does look like the filter... Needs replaced. Interesting. I don't remember using it much when I started having trouble with it, but maybe maybe I did more than I thought I did the last time I used it successfully. Anyways, that's what I, I found is that there's a whole bunch of solder there and there's the filter, so. Well, all right, well, let's see what happens if I clean this. Let me go knock this off in the trash. I think I've got four filters.
I mean, seriously, I... I seemingly remember having trouble with this right after servicing it last time, so... Maybe... Maybe it was whatever board I was doing at the time. Maybe time flew and I didn't realize how long I'd used that. <sighs> Jeremy, I can't change the tip on my soldering iron. It is like... It is stuck to the guard. I can't change it. Uh... Also, I contend that I sure sure remember last time I used this, I had trouble the first the first joint I tried to desolder. But as I said, it might have been whatever I was desoldering, and not necessarily because I, I remember replacing this filter and then trying to use it. and having trouble like right after servicing it but maybe i fooled myself because maybe that first attempt was whatever i was desoldering was the problem but then i ended up being able to fool myself up until now because it kept not working This is my story, and I'm going to stick to it. But I guess maybe what I didn't realize is it actually was doing something. Or maybe that board that it was having trouble with, maybe, maybe what I didn't realize, it was pulling solder, but not all of it. Because I don't remember which board it was that I serviced it while trying to work on, and it doing that didn't do anything. Yeah, I know. Thermal mass. Okay, well, let me see if now that I've spent two and a half hours trying to work on this board. Let me see if maybe now that I've changed the filter after realizing that apparently it was doing more than I thought it was. I'm still not going to guarantee it's going to do much of anything. Alright, let me at least get these solder blobs off my desk. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't change the tip on this because this, the soldering tip is stuck into the cover. I cannot get it out. It will not come out. I do not have a, a replacement for that on hand. not I mean Hacko sells that part but it's not really a part that you should have to change in normal course of actions oh yeah Joe I was actually going to mention earlier today that your web store was misbehaving around 4 p.m. But then I forgot. Yeah, I tried to add something to my cart and it replied back with like a um, 
some weird error. All right, it's uh, doing what it was doing. Yep. Maybe I'm not leaving it on the board long enough, but... Okay, I don't know how long you should hold this before... ...pulling. Seriously, I just cleaned it. It's removed no solder. Why is it acting like it's clogged? Also, why can I never find the... Uh... All right, well, let's try this. I don't know, maybe I should rename the stream the spend all night trying to, to clear four vias to install a new oscillator. Watch Justin struggle with old solder because someone didn't remove their battery. I don't know what'll help with the YouTube algorithm. Cause now I'd like to get up to that 500 subscriber mark sooner rather than later because I got a message from YouTube. Apparently they've lowered the partner program thresholds. Now it's like 500 subscribers and 3,000 watch hours. So uh, smash that like button, share my channel with a friend, and uh, help me get to 500 subs and 3,000 watch hours. Play my live streams in the background. Watch me struggle with old solder. Listen to me struggle with old solder. But please, remove those batteries before you put your Macs back in storage. Or someone like me is going to be struggling with a board 20 years down the road. Just like this one. <laughs> yeah, the aftermath of a... Well, I don't think it was an Apple bomb. I think it was a Maxwell bomb. Although Apple did choose Mac, Mac or Maxell, a Maxell bomb, because Apple chose Maxell batteries, and the number of times that you can buy a vintage Mac with a unleaked Maxell battery now, I think the Maxells are that that's pretty rare. I think the Mac cells are like the, the most likely that you're going to see in a Mac with battery damage. Although I think followed by a close second by the, um, 
the um, is it the the Tataran ones? Yeah, Maxwell. Yeah. Yeah, I think Max L should have just stuck to making cassette tapes. And I guess maybe they were like, oh no, Apple stopped putting cassette ports on their computers. What do we do? Well, why don't we just make batteries for Apples? Their computers now have batteries. Excellent idea. But we're a cassette tape manufacturer. Well, let's just use this unused, uh, some of our uh, things we're used to using. I don't know. All right, now added fresh solder. Yeah, Mexo still makes batteries today, but do they make the uh, the uh, half double A lithium batteries? I don't think they still make those. Yeah, Varda does too, yeah. Oh yeah, it's the Varda um, batteries. I mean, seriously, if, if anyone's wondering why I'm struggling so much, it's because I'm sure that there was battery electrolyte that was sitting under this oscillator for years. And it mixed with the the leaded solder that was in the vias, and it just has made a an alloy that is yeah. Tataran makes them too. Still makes. In fact, I think Saft still makes uh, them as well. Okay, I know I know Thomas suggested that I try putting the soldering iron on one side and the desoldering gun on the other. The thing is, I don't think I can safely do that, but I will give it a try. I honestly think I will um I'm also going to prioritize um not burning myself over it's going to necessarily be on camera. So I apologize in, if, in advance if this isn't on camera, but I would rather not burn myself doing this. And that didn't budge one bit. Nope, that via did not, uh, that didn't do anything to that via. Oh, 
Oh wait. Or did I get the, did, did I do the wrong one? Wait a minute. Okay. Breaking news, I have three vias clear. I did finally get Okay, that did get one of them clear. So now I have three clear, finally. Yep. One, two, three. Okay, I've got three clear. Hopefully I didn't break any traces doing it. Okay. So let me let me try this other one. And I'm gonna try the soldering iron and the desolder station on the opposite sides of the boards. Uh, I this will be off camera because I I don't have a way of doing this on camera. Whoops. Okay. Uh, I think I had it on the wrong one. All right, let me try putting the soldering iron on. There we go. Mm. All right, nope. Okay, that one's still not budging. I'm trying to get the pins out of the vias from for the oscillator. I I cannot replace the oscillator until I get the original pins out. That is how badly oxidized the original solder is. Uh, Eric, I've, I don't have a needle that wants to fit down this via. I have tried a component lead. I, uh, I have tried pushing with a component lead that is not helping. I mean, I don't think the needle's small enough. I'll try it again. No, I don't think this needle's small enough. I mean, the thing is, I, I see the... Yeah, um, I don't have a drill bit small enough. I think... Oh, please. Show. Joe is... Well, Joe is probably correct. There probably is a huge ground plane under here. It could also be the 5-volt plane, because I think some of these boards actually have a plane for 5 volts, because that's the 5-volt pin for the thing. Okay, I, I think I'm going to go... Uh... I'm, uh, I'm... Okay, I will try a component lead with a blob of solder on it. Nothing... But I'm I'm getting I don't know how that's going to help. Because all that does is make me not be able to see the via. Uh, 
I'm having trouble seeing the V as it is. Well, now the blob of solder is on my soldering iron. And the thing is, there does appear to be a blob of solder there. Well, now I've got solder balls everywhere. Hey, Dave. Oh, yeah, I think there's a huge plane under here, but... So, um... The component lead with solder wasn't helping because the solder was not staying on the component lead and it was making it hard to see the, the via. I mean, it looks... I think I can still see the component lead in the via. Seeing if maybe I can get the uh, component lead to come out. All right, maybe one of these days I'll actually get on to the repair. All right. All right. I guess um I'm actually next week I'm probably only going to stream one one night. Not that I don't have, I mean, I have enough projects I could stream two nights, but I'm not sure it's, uh, it's an, the leg of an LED. It has a fairly substantial leg on it. It's also a component I can afford to lose because they're like a dime a dozen. I mean, it, it will not go in the via. I can see the leg of the original component there in it. There is probably a huge plane under this via.
I mean, seriously, I'm... Yeah. Yeah, I kind of started streaming two nights a week because I thought it might... But so I've had some people say, you know, no one streams on Tuesdays and... I had some people suggest, oh, maybe you can stream on Tuesdays and it'll do better, but I don't know. I think I'm dividing my viewership. I'm having trouble figuring it. I mean, I'm trying not to obsess over the YouTube metrics, but mm, my views are down. I don't know if it's just because it's summer and people are doing summery things. It's because I've had a string of repairs that have just been taken way longer. And or I've had some off nights in the past month or two. Just It's the topics I'm picking or the night of the week. But I think I figured out, no, it's not the night of the week because... Tuesdays didn't seem to be doing much better than Thursdays, so. So, I'm probably only going to stream one night next week, and it'll be Thursday night. And it'll probably be the PC motherboard, because, well, if I remember to order Flux, it'll be the PC motherboard. Hot air plus solder needle. I I don't know if the solder needle is going to fit. I have well. Okay, so this solder needle will go through this via. But the other two vias that I've cleared, it's not going through. Although maybe that's because there's some residual solder in them. I mean, I can try hot air at this point. Considering I'm three hours in and... Okay, I will try hot air. Well, I will try to try hot air and a solder needle. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe I might still stream both nights, but it, um, I mean, the, the thing is, my views seem to be way down from, like, April. And, I mean, like, way down. I, I don't understand. I mean, I guess I, I could say maybe it's just the fact that it's summer and people are doing, actually be, being able to do things, but I don't know. I'm, I, I wish I could understand the metrics to know if it's, is it just the time of the year or am I doing something wrong? <laughs> well, Jack, um, it's like, what's another three hours, but I don't know. I are people going to watch a 6-hour live stream of me removing clearing four vias in a board? I don't know. I'm just like it's kind of one of those things a small YouTuber I I don't I don't 
know. I, I wish I understood the metrics more, but I don't like obsessing over the metrics. It's one of the cool ironies of YouTube. I, I got to appease the algorithm, but I don't really want to obsess over it. But I also don't know what I'm doing wrong and not appeasing the algorithm. But could it just be the time of the year and people are being doing things outside? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I know. I, that's the thing. At 8 p.m. it's still daylight outside. But I, I can't... It, but if I start at 9, that gives me three hours to stream. But it doesn't change the fact that I have to stop streaming at about midnight because I have to work I have to work Monday through Friday, so I gotta still be at work on Friday. Friday night I already know is not a good night to stream because there's plenty of other streamers that usually stream on Fridays. So it's kind of one of those yeah I know. Maybe part of it is the fact that it's still daylight at eight and I mean even now yeah, it's still, it's 8 o'clock in California. It's still light there. And, and maybe it just is the time of year. So. I don't know. Maybe I just need to have worse weather. You know, Jack, I guess I need to go back and look at the metrics last summer because... Maybe, maybe I had a slowdown last summer too, and, well, there went my solder needle. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to use the solder needle because it's, uh, Bent. I think I'm about to go back to it's the summer lull, yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe I should go back and look at my metrics. It's It would sure be helpful if YouTube would maybe make it a little easier to look look at things like year over year if you've been streaming for more than a year. Cuz they only tell you like, "Oh, well you're you're up like 2% from last stream or you're you're like down your views are way down from your last stream. That doesn't help. Because, yeah, you're right. It could be the summer lull. I might have had the same lull last summer, and I've just forgotten because it was last year. But YouTube only tells me how I'm doing compared to my last stream. And the last, like, six to eight streams, each stream is getting fewer viewers. Of course, the thing is, it's also... Staying lighter outside longer, which, so it's kind of like, yeah, I'm having trouble figuring out what the correlation is based on what YouTube will happily tell you without clicking lots of links to find the, um, the historical data. So I guess I will have to go look at the historical data because... Okay, before anyone notices that I'm having a really hard time holding the hot air gun and putting wick on the board, and also then I'm about to grab the soldering iron to try to desolder that blob of solder while keeping the ground plane or suspected ground plane warm, I do not have a board holder that will hold a 2CI board. So, yeah, it's just going to be a struggle. It's below... Probably below solder station that can, at the moment. 
So I'll take this uh, time to plug my coffee. Uh, so even if you're watch rewatching it and you want to just chip in a little bit to help me get some better tools, maybe a board holder that might actually hold a board this big. Or maybe a hot air holder. That would be nice, too. Um, well, well, Sloopy, if I were to go by the uh, Patreon and coffee metric, um, I am up on patrons. But I, I don't remember how many coffee tips I got like last this time last year. Um, I also um, I also try to hold to not complaining on the stream therefore i'm not going to say um how much in coffee tips i got last month the only thing i'll say is there is a reason why my goal is a carryover i am always grateful for any coffee tips i get but I, I feel that if I revealed how much in coffee tips I got last month, it might cross my line of me trying not to complain on the stream. So. If you want to ask me privately, I'll, um, but I may not reveal it there either. Also, at any time, if you think I'm, uh, um, starting to complain, then you're always welcome to say, Justin, I think you're, um, oh, I think I got that via free, assuming I didn't just, like, push the via out completely. Yay! I think I have four vias clear, and it only took me three hours. Folks, please, remove these batteries before storing your Macs. Otherwise, some geek... 30 to 40 years down the line, we'll probably spend three hours trying to remove the four vias of the main oscillator. Yes, I have four clear vias now. It only took three hours. I have a 3D printer. I tried to upgrade it while building it. I broke stuff removing one of the stepper motors that I had to remove to do the upgrade. And the 3D printer is setting to the side now. It's also why I've usually been printing stuff at work because we have a... There's a 3D, some 3D printers at work where we can even use for personal use in the interest of learning new things, so. But yeah, I wish I had my own, I wish I had my 3D printer up and running, but. I, yeah. Long story short, it's setting to the side, I gotta get things to fix what I broke. And of course, every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, well, I get upgrade-itis. In fact, I almost, I almost ordered the part today to, to fix it and move on, but then I started looking at other things for the printer. I wish I, wish I had the, like, dual-axis Z extruder, because I don't know. Because there's there's something weird about the Z-axis on my printer. It's the Creality Ender 3. Something like that. The V2. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, um... I, I tried to see... Because, okay. I guess the short story long... 
Okay, I got. Okay, I got it. Before I, I was gonna put the socket on for the oscillator. Okay, the short story long on that printer. So. So I, I guess earlier this year, or maybe it was late last year. I don't know. I went. I got the the ninety nine dollar three D printer special at Micro Center. Um. I think it was probably like early this year. I no, actually maybe it was late. Might have been last year. It probably was last year. It doesn't really matter when it was. I went. I got the the ninety nine dollar three D printer special. The box sat in my office for I don't know how long. Then we had a contest to where oh yeah it would have been last year because um. The con I have a contest I entered at work in uh, October. So I entered a contest in October after building a gadget, and I won the first prize, and I got to pick my prize, and I picked a 3D printer. The same one I already had, but it had accessories with it. So... I, uh... I sent the uh, printer I won to Jeremy because I knew he could use it, but I kept the, the upgrades because I didn't have them. Uh, one of them was the, the metal, the metal extruder upgrade. I don't know what, whatever it is. What's a core XY? That's probably, um, I don't know what a Core XY style printer is, but I suspect if I look at, look up, look it up, then, then I'm not going to want to finish putting my Creality printer together. Oh, too late. I just looked up what it is and yeah. I think that is the style printer that I'd kind of like to have. Oh, those are kind of expensive. Oh, the bamboo is a core XY style printer. Joe has an extra Ender 3 printer that he that needs to go away. Well, I have an Ender 3 printer that I need to finish putting together, but I broke something trying to install an upgrade yeah believe me joe i would like a bamboo printer because i'd like to be able to print prototype parts in minutes not hours but no not going to happen not anytime soon I've got a couple things on my list that are higher than spending $1,600 on a 3D printer. Anyways, I guess the, the story of the 3D printer. So anyways, I, I tried to install one of these upgrades on the Creality printer while I was putting it together because I thought it would be easier than putting it together, testing it, and then pulling things off again to install the upgrade. Well, anyways... That, um, that required removing the stepper motor that the um, extruder goes on. Which then required removing the plastic extruder parts to put the uh, metal one on. Well, so I remove, so in removing the plastic parts from this stepper motor, I, I broke something. So I, I can't put the plastic extruder back on. But also, what I didn't realize was that the stepper motor that was in the extruder position, Creality switched to a type that is the wrong one for installing one of these kits. So... I now have the extruder stepper motor in my hand and not on the printer, 
with a gear that you cannot remove. But the shaft, you can't put one of these kits on it because it's the wrong shaft anyways, even if you could remove the gear. And yeah, it's why the printer's just setting this aside because I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, that that's the story of my Creality printer. Believe me, I'd love a bamboo printer. Maybe, maybe I'll just have to find the right contest and win a bamboo. So, I, I got other things higher on my list. Okay, I'm not, I don't think I broke any traces at this point. I just want to, like, I don't know. It's getting late enough. So, now, now you know why I, um, I just use the, the Pressa, the Pressa printers at work. Well, actually, that probably also told you everything you need to know. The 3D printers at our innovation station at work, they're press-up printers. So, <laughs> they usually just work. Pressa makes a really nice printer. Although, granted, I, uh, I did have to take one of the extruders completely apart because I was printing something on one of them the other day, and... Uh, Well, lo and behold, I didn't realize there wasn't enough plastic on the spool that I had in the printer. And mid-print, it ran out of plastic. Fortunately, the printer did have an end of filament sensor, so it did stop printing. Unfortunately, though, when it ran out of filament, it, um, it didn't detect it in time for the into the filament to still be in a spot where it could unload said into filament. So anyways, it, um, I tried to load new fill. I tried to load new filament cause I thought that, Oh, I put the new filament in and it'll just feed it. It's waiting for me to do that. No, actually. Apparently the end of the filament on the spool that I was using had a great big blob at the end of it. So, yeah, basically it, it couldn't feed any more filament. I couldn't unload anything, couldn't load anything. So I had to, I had to take the extruder completely apart to actually get to the point of the clog. But I can't, I can't say that was Pressa's fault. It's more like the whatever manufacturer made the filament that was in the printer. Presser or Prusa, I don't know. I have an accent. Someone, uh, I've got an accent. I don't know what it is. I kind of laughed when someone told me today that that I pronounced a word weird because of my southern drawl, and I had to contain my laughter because I didn't realize I had a southern drawl because I've had other people tell me that it sounds like I'm from the north. Maybe I do have a southern draw. Maybe I've been in the south long enough. Well. Alright, I have to say one thing. I don't like the way any of those solder joints look. They all look awful. And I did use flux, and they look awful. <laughs> yeah, uh, Joe, Joe is, uh, I think, uh, you, you're, yes, my accent is interesting. It's like, I have a slight southern draw. I think I have a slight northern draw, and I think I have a slight. Who knows where it came from? Uh, 
Oh. Well, I've had some people tell me they think I'm um, that I have a northern accent, but then again. Maybe my accent's changed since they told me that. All right. Yes, I definitely say the word time very weirdly. I agree with you, Joe. Reasons why I don't like editing my own videos. A, well, we all find our own voices weird. Sometimes I can find the way I pronounce things cringy when I listen to them. B. Editing videos take a lot of time. Well, Joe, I I'm wonder if it's maybe because of where I learned how to pronounce different words, because... Because the area where I went to kindergarten and first grade is different from the area where I was in second grade, is different from the area where I was in the rest of primary and secondary school not to be super specific and I do know that uh, in your younger years of primary school you learn a lot of words so I wonder if my varied pronunciations have to do with where I learned how to pronounce certain words No, Jeremy, I uh, just, uh, it can be weird listening to your own voice. There we go. I've got the oscillator in. All that to, um, attempt to power this board up. I have no idea what's going to happen. I, I do know there are no shorts on the board as far as I can tell. Or at least when I checked it. Oh, wait, I forgot one thing. Oh, you know, I didn't give myself credit. I, okay, so I did misspeak. I, it took me three hours to remove four vias wasn't quite accurate. It took me three hours to remove six vias. I, I forgot. I did get the two vias for the crystal out fairly easily. And I do, do need to put one of those on. I think. I'm fairly certain that if I had the crystal missing, it would probably, it might actually stand a chance of still working, just the real-time clock would be wrong. But I should at least take credit that I did get those two pins out fairly quickly. Okay, let me pop a, a crystal for the real-time clock in, because I, I don't know what it'll do if that's not present. It may power up, it may not, but it's... uh not a big deal to solder it in it's a bigger deal to uh open the bag because i guess mauser put tape on it just to make sure that the tiny crystals didn't fall out in shipping because i don't know if the crystals that apple used were this small but I think I ordered the wrong case size. How's the capacitor leakage in the startup circuit area? Um, one of the transistors is missing bad. And so, of course, the next question is probably going to be, how am I going to start this board up with a transistor missing in the soft power circuit area? 
And that is where I'm going to admit that I am going to try something that I have no idea if it'll even work. But I am going to use an ATX power supply. And I'm not going to power the board up using the soft power circuit. I'm going to power the board up by <laughs> by shorting the power on and ground pins on the power supply together. Basically, I'm going to jump start the board. I don't think it will damage the logic board. It just it may not be happy. I mean, it, it may uh, very well uh, not do much, but yeah, I'm basically going to turn it on by telling the pow ATX power supply to turn on. And to do that, I want to damage a ATX extension cable to do it, but cause I, I don't want to potentially short something on the power adapter I have. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the capacitor leakage on the startup circuit side is not conducive to trying to power it up. Okay, uh, at least I got a real time. I got I've got a crystal on the real time clock side, so at least all the timing devices are present, even if the real time clock is battery damaged. But yeah, um, now I did run this through the ultrasonic cleaner, so the leakage is somewhat reduced in visibility. But yeah, Q3 is missing. I don't have one of those transistors on hand. I forgot that I had removed them from the Mauser order, not realizing exactly why they were in the cart. I'm like, oh. But these aren't for anything that I'm ordering parts for. And I removed them from the cart because I forgot to add a note to myself in the field to note that, oh, yeah, you need these for the Max 2CI and other things. So I was like, oh, I don't need these transistors. Why are they here in the first place? I just removed them. So. But, yeah, I'm going to bypass the startup circuit because. Yeah, I, it, I mean. Without that, that transistor is most definitely in the startup circuit. I looked at the schematic. It is not going to power up with that. Uh, it is not going to power up on its own with that missing because that is most definitely in the power up circuit. All right, I do need to find my power adapter. So one moment while I find that because I thought I knew where I put it, but it's not where I thought I put it. Um, probably in close proximity to where I thought I put it. Yes, assuming I'm visible on camera, I thought I'd set it on the shelf right here after cleaning it. But I didn't, which probably means it's like right around here. No, I bet I know where I actually put it. Let's see. Oh, great. I left it in some genius place, thinking that I was being clever, that I would obviously think to look in that spot when I next live stream.
which of course the answer is no. Obviously, I put it in a really bad spot. I mean, I guess I could build another one of those adapters. I have the parts to build another one. Now, okay. Actually, you know, building another one of those adapters isn't a bad idea. Okay, let me see if I've got the parts to build another one. Because I think I did order parts to build another one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... I'm not going to install the surface mount parts. The surface mount parts are for the startup circuit. So... All right, so let me, I'm just going to really quickly build another one of these adapters, but I'm only going to put the, the two power connectors on it, which actually, in this case, this means the, I won't have to, I may not have to irreversibly, uh, or I may not have to permanently damage my ATX extension cable to get this to power up, because... Without the surface mount components, I don't think I don't think if I short the uh, the power up pins on the ATX side, I don't think they'll potentially do something on the Apple side because there's no direct connection without those surface mount components. So um, I might I think I would like to pull the schematic up real quick. The double actually no I'll just um uh, I'll, I'll just double check it for myself because I, I think I know which pins are the which pins are which I'll probably then find the adapter um within seconds of putting this together but I, got, I kind of vaguely remember that I wanted to put one of these together without the surface mount components anyways. For jump starting boards. Um, well, uh, Thomas, I'm trying to do an initial power up. Also, didn't really. Well, I guess I could short those on this board. Actually, that's not a bad idea. All right, I'll just uh, I'll short those two pins on this board. Then I don't have to. I don't have to do anything to my extension cable. All right, I'll just have to I'll just have to look up which pins are the two pins. Okay. Uh Yeah, Thomas, I I got finally got the the vias clear. It took took me 3 hours to clear 6 vias in total. And then I, I installed a socket for the oscillator. I installed a new crystal. And now I'm just building one of these adapters without the surface mount parts. And I'll just, I'll, I'll short the power on and ground pin. So that basically I'll use the, I'll use a power switch to turn the, it on and off. It'll give me one of these adapters I can use for jump starting max.
In theory, that should work. Yeah, I, I want to power it up now that I got the oscillator and crystal on it just to see what it might do, if anything. I mean, I, I really don't expect it's going to do much, but. I also don't know why the first connector went on so well without flux and why this one's. It may have something to do with the plating that's on the connectors I bought. All right. Okay, now. Yes, I think all the necessary power rails are direct connections. I think the, uh, I think the only thing on this board that's not a direct connection is the uh, power on. Because at Apple, the Apple's um ATX standard is backwards from Apple's um Oh, that's right. There was a clip on that. Okay, so the pins I need to short are Oh, wait. I need to short. One, two. There we go. I need to short these two pins here. Those are the power on pins. And I'm going to do that with a component lead. And what better component lead to use than the one that I've already bent? This stream. Oh, okay.
All right. Good night, Joe. And by that, I mean, enjoy Star Trek and then good night. Yep, I, I think all the necessary power rails are direct connections. So I think this will work. And if it doesn't, then, well, it's either because I soldered the wrong two pins together or because there's something else that's not directly connected than I thought, that I thought there was, so. There we go. I give you the uh, the sketch edition. Should probably clean some of the flux off at least. All right, I have one power adapter that will jump start a Macintosh computer. In fact, I bet this adapter would probably power up that 2VX board that didn't want to be powered with the other adapter that actually depends on the Apple startup circuit. So there we go, one power adapter board without the pesky startup um, circuit conversion. All right, one ATX power supply. Oh. I found my other adapter. <laughs> Honest, I don't remember using. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay. I now remember. I ultrasonically cleaned it. And then while I was down here earlier in the week, I tried using it because I was running some benchmarks for a video I'm working on. Okay, now I know why it's on the end of the ATX power connect uh, supply. Well, I think I still wanted, I think I still wanted the jump start edition. So, all right. So I'm actually. I'm actually first not even going to put any RAM in it unless I can find some like unless I can find my uh two hundred and fifty six K Sims. That are floating around here somewhere. Seriously, I, I oh I know where they are. No, that's fine. Okay, I don't remember what I was... Oh, I know where they are. Of course, I've said that like twice. I think they're in my 386 board. Yeah, there they are.
Oh, I've got a speaker on it. The speaker is uh, first thing I plugged in, but then I realized I don't think these do much without RAM. A megabyte will do. In fact, I think Apple shipped these. I think the low end configuration of these was a megabyte. Okay. We got power, got RAM, got a speaker. We've got a Justin backing away slowly. All right, three, two, one. Oh, wow, that was funny. The lights went. And nothing. Oh, we got the power LED on. Yep, that is a big fat nothing. Yeah, I didn't even hear a um Yeah, I don't hear anything on the speaker. Actually, I kind of would be curious if Okay. Curiosity has the best of me maybe. Okay. I am curious as to if we even have clock signals. I guess the good things are we I, it didn't just like go up and smoke. All right, let me see if I can find pin um Actually, wait a minute. Maybe it'd be easier if I just like do that number right there. Nope. Hold on. Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> never mind my uh um uh, never mind my interjection I was about to make. <laughs> I was about to say, wait a minute, it just chimed. <laughs> Thank you, Jack 68K. <laughs> uh, that was a uh, coffee chiming, not my Mac chiming. Um, I, okay, I, I, I looked at the All right, first of all, okay, oh, hold on. Uh, 
Um, you're seeing a blank screen because I gotta find the uh, toggle switch on my VGA splitter and flip it back. Oh, no, I think it's, uh, no, it didn't chime. That was a coffee, uh, that was a coffee tip. Yes, uh, my coffee notification sound is the same noise that um, several Macs make, including this PCI. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's why. I have input one. Oh. Whatever. Hold, please. I'm trying to fix the, uh, Reason why you can't see my oscilloscope. There we go. Okay, I did something silly to video cables. Now I've unsillied it. Okay, so I've got power on. I wanted to show what the crystal, so what the oscillator output looks like. And is that correct, if anyone knows? That doesn't really look. I mean, I guess maybe it is. Maybe on an oscillator, that is what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> uh, okay, Jack. Uh, Jack, I'll, uh, I'll I'll ask Steve if I can. Uh, I'll ask Steve if I can steal one of his uh, sound clips. I won't tell him which one. I'm just going to tell him I'm going to steal one of them. Okay, so... Voltages. What about voltages? Okay. So that was what the, uh, the oscillator looked like, which didn't look that great if you ask me. Okay, I don't know which pin is which on this adapter. Oh, there we go. All right, so that's five, 5.06 volts. That's zero. That's five, 5.06 volts. Okay, so it looks like we've got five and 12. Should be a nice square wave. That's kind of what I was thinking. Let me see if I can uh, probe the actual pin on the chip -a doodle that uses that. Oh, so like maybe... Uh, Okay, that, I don't think that's the right pin. Hold please while I try to get my oscilloscope on the pin that I actually want to show you.
It might be easier if I found the pin that was uh on the processor. Hold on. I know you can't see the oscilloscope, but I'm uh, not. I I gotta. I'm trying to find the right correct pin. Actually, somehow I suspect. All right. Let me change the capture input. I was thinking maybe it looks different at the chip. That's kind of weird. Hmm. All right, I want to um That's not good. So the little crystal that I put on I think there's a Alright, I think the uh, diagnosis is the oscillator is kind of warm. I mean, not hot. None of the other chips are like hot. Or, well, I would like to know if I have any other clocks on this system. Let me see if I can find a ground point. Kind of thing. Yeah, the, the oscillator I just installed is warm. Yes, I'm sure it's in correctly. The dot is to pin one. Because if they're, uh, because the data sheet doesn't. The data sheet says the square corner is pin one. And yeah. I've got it incorrectly. It's also the side with the dot. Yes, I also see the output waveform should be a square wave. Yes. And it's not.
which what that tells me is that it's probably not it's either not getting five volts All right, let me see here. It should be pin 14. So let me let me see what we've got on the uh, pin that's supposed to be 5 volts. It's a tricky measurement. So tricky that... Five point oh six volts. Okay. I do have 5 volts going to it. I mean, maybe it doesn't have a good ground connection. That would be harder to check. But yeah, let me see here. Let me let me try again. Oh. This kind of appears if I'm not getting an output from the oscillator. Oh, that out that oscillator is not. Uh, I think it failed. You would uh, pull the oscillator, feed a five volts dead bug, and see what its output looks like. Well. Uh, let's see. I might be able to do that, but that'll be the last thing I do tonight. Also, let me see if I can find the best way to give it five volts. Let me see if I can find some of my little jumper wires. I'll give it five volts from the ground from the logic board because that seems to be working. Only because I don't really have. Okay. So, 5 volts. That's ground. That's 5 volts. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Probably the silliest thing in the world. Okay. So, I've got a jumper lead in what is marked as the case ground pin. And I'm going to push the oscillator lead, um, lead into there. And that one's 5 volts. And I have enough room that I can confirm with a multimeter because I can get the multimeter in there to check. I am trying to find the blob of... Blue goo that I can use to, uh, in uh, true dead bug fashion, dead bug the 
There, we'll dead bug it right on top of this ROM here. And... All right. Yeah, the, the logic board is not going to do anything for sure now. But let me make sure we got 5 volts and... So, I have 5.06 volts going to the oscillator. And in fact, I can... Um, Check that I've got 5.06 volts. Well, actually, let me do this. Okay. So I got 5.06 volts going to it. So I should have a signal on is it this pin. One, seven, eight. Should be that pin right there. Uh, Jack, I have a bench power supply, but I don't have, I don't have a really good way of plugging this oscillator into it. Hence, why I'm using a parts 2CI logic board and an ATX power supply to power this thing and I wish I knew where the clip lead was for this oscilloscope probe but I dropped it somewhere it's probably on the floor It would have been too simple for me to have set it in front of the oscilloscope. Well, actually, it probably was sitting in front of the oscilloscope, and I knocked it on the floor. But uh, I don't see it. Somewhere I have another couple of oscilloscope probes that work with this oscilloscope. I don't. I don't know where they are right offhand. All right, there's the oscilloscope dead bugged. That still doesn't look like the data sheet, but it's better than it was. Okay, well, Thomas says that's okay. Although I would like to know why the drawing on the data sheet shows this perfect uh, square wave as the expected output when in reality it 
is far from perfect, but whatever. Okay, so, well, I think that answers the question. The, the board needs work. Probably not surprisingly. Also it tells me what I've known all along. I need to get some more uh, adapter leads for various things. Then I could have used my bench power supply instead of a overly complex 2CI power adapter. I'm going to answer that with no, my scope probe is probably not calibrated. That might be the cause of the noise. My scope is not calibrated. My scope probe is not calibrated. I am not paying for professional calibration. But that might also answer my question. Maybe that's where the distortion's coming from. I don't have a different... Uh, that out Oh, Sloopy... Okay, Thomas says it's okay. Sloopy says that output will not work. Well, I have one more oscillator if I can find what I did with it. Okay, I got one more. Let's see what it looks like. Wait a minute, did I get pins mixed up? Hold on. No, I didn't. Just me uh, looking at the thing upside down. Okay. All right, so let's see what this other one looks like. Oh, well, that's, that's not good. Hold on. One, pin one. And let's see, that's ground. Hold on. Okay. Um, yeah, I know you can't see what I was seeing, but uh, I'll just give you the executive summary. Uh, I was seeing nothing. Okay. Do I still have? Do I still have five volts? Oh. Well, that would, uh, no, I don't have five volts. Oh, well, okay. Well, it would appear as if, uh, no, the power supply was plugged in. Uh, 
I think something, uh, I think something on the logic board decided to short. I don't know what, so maybe one of the tantalums. All right, well, but yeah, I, uh, I wasn't getting, uh, the, the power supply wasn't turning on. But the, the, it was definitely plugged in. My outlet was turned on. But the power supply wasn't turning on, so it's probably going into short circuit protection. I wonder if one of the tantalum caps decided to finally go short. Oh, wait. Or was my outlet off, maybe? No, it was on. Never mind. False alarm. Okay. Alright, so I got 5 volts. And I'll set it to like... Fifty milliamps. All right, let me screw these terminals in. They're not the best terminals for this, but well, for what I have. All right. I had some uh, banana lead cables that I could plug into this, but, well, they were, they were too cheap. I, I broke them, like, very, after very little usage, so I need to get better, um, um, I need to find a better banana plug cable that'll plug into my bench supply. So, okay, hold on. This is going to be the last test, and then I'm about to stop streaming, because... It's getting late, and... It's getting late, and I feel like the stream has, uh... Not gone the way I'd hoped, and I mean, okay, was I expecting the board to power up? No, no, I'd be lying if I said I expected the board to power up. I mean, I did expect that the oscillator would have had a nice square wave output that i that I expected and Had no reason to believe I wouldn't have a square wave output, but okay. So I have the oscillator dead bugged on the bench. Oh, that's much better. That's actually what I expected it to look like. So that's the second oscillator. That that actually looks like the square wave I expected. The the peaks and the I, I think the non uniform the my oscilloscope probe's causing some of the um irregular shape. That's what I expected. So that one's good. 
Okay, well, I'm going to plug the first one in to this setup. I mean, it is possible that I, the uh, first one, that there's something wrong with my board and the first one was damaged as a result. Also, I'm, I'm clipping onto the oscilloscope cases, or the oscillators, oscillators case as the ground. And, yeah, that actually, that, that's the first one. That's a square wave. All right, well, I think that um, I think that tells me what I needed to know about that board. That board needs work. Because, uh, yeah. So it looks like the first area that I need to troubleshoot is uh, the area around the oscillator because it would appear as if there's some some issue with that part of the board that's distorting the of the oscillator's signal and i don't see any capacitors in that area of the board cuz i'm looking at the 2ci board so Um, I, yeah, Sloopy, I do know how to, to, I do know how to calibrate the probe, but it's, um, this is an old Tektronix scope, so it's actually not a simple process to calibrate the probe. It's not something I can just sit down here and do right now. Um, well, uh, do you have a tech, are you going to tell me how to calibrate a Tektronics oscilloscope probe? Because that, that is not a, that probe is not a standard oscilloscope probe. That is a, that is a FET probe for a Tektronics scope. And I have, I remember seeing the calibration instructions in the manual and I think it's a little more than just uh, connect it to the output on the oscilloscope and adjust a knob. So, uh, Jeremy, don't let all of those traces fool you. I have done some investigation on the bottom of this board in areas that are not anywhere close to the battery. This all appears to just be solder mask damage. So please don't assume that just because the solder mask is bubbled up that those are broken traces. In fact, I've kind of looked here too. I think there's a lot of solder mask damage on this board. Now, if you were talking about on this area of the board, then yeah, I do, I do know there are some broken traces there. And maybe I was foolhardy to just try to power it up, but I wanted to get an idea of the condition of this board. Uh, it's a Tektronix TDS524A scope, and uh, it's uh, the... P6205 FET probe. So, yeah, it's a... Um, it's a 
It's this is this is actually one of the special probes for the oscilloscope. It it's actually um one of the probes I have that actually works correctly, but it's not a um Uh, also, but if if I recall, it's not one that is a um uh I don't know I maybe I'm remembering wrong things about the manual, but some some of the probes have long drawn out calibration procedures. I I don't know where my simple probe I, I have some simple probes for that oscilloscope. One of them is hiding, uh, and one of them was broken. Although, I, um, yes. If you're going to buy an oscilloscope, I don't know that I'd buy a Tektronix scope for personal use. But if they're scrapping it at work, then by all means. But at least the TDS 500 series, it... It fully expects that you're going to use the Tektronix brand oscilloscope probes. It will actually not let you calibrate a generic probe. I tried. You'll start the calibration process and it will very quickly tell you that I can't do that, Dave. Well, Sloopy, I don't know that my scope is as nice as you lead it to make it out to be. It is a 30-year-old scope and probably needs recapped. And the uh, and the 500 series expects you to use Tektronix probes. Because if you notice those extra pins on the probe, yeah, this scope wants to see those extra pins. Now, the standard tech probes that go on this don't have quite as many pins. Actually, I think I just remembered where one of the standard probes is. But I think it still has a couple of those pins because they're how the oscilloscope knows what you've plugged into it. Nope. And that's also why it doesn't like a generic probe that has none of those pins is because, well... It actually is uh, looking at what you plug into it, so. Also, it's amazing what I managed to drop and knock onto the floor during a live stream. No wonder I can't find anything. Half the time, it's I've knocked it on the floor. And if I didn't knock it on the floor, I set it on the floor just because there's no workbench space to set it. But anyways, yeah, I, I know there's some traces that I need to fix on this board. But uh, I also know that there are there are some of these traces that look broken until you scrape the solder mask off. And it's the solder mask, not the trace. So believe me, if if I had done my investigation here... And scraped off some of the bubbled solder mask and found that those were broken traces. I would not be trying to repair this board. Because I am not going to repair a board that has hundreds of broken traces. Especially that close together and... In fact, I think I just found... Oh yeah, though, I think I just found a... Really nice broken trace, though. Oh, yeah. Maybe I, maybe I now see what Jeremy might have seen, and I didn't. Yeah, I just looked at the edge of this board. Although, it is quite possible that I... Because uh, it's near the power connector, I might have... Um... Actually, I don't remember seeing that earlier. I may have to go look at my pictures of this board from earlier. Focus. I don't remember seeing that before. I'm wondering if I've fried some traces powering this up.
Because I do not remember seeing some of this damage before. And that right there, I believe... I mean, I might be wrong, but I think that is like a broken trace in like six different places on the same trace. I think these are broken. I, I'm wondering if I'm... Yeah, don't, don't look for them yet. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of concerned about that because I don't think those were broken... I mean, I'll, I'll go back and uh, maybe, maybe this was like this before. But I think I might go back on the live stream and see if I caught this because I'm wondering if I shorted something. Or maybe that trace was broken. I don't know, but yeah. I think I am now seeing some of those traces that Jeremy might have seen or that happened while I was trying to power it up one. But yeah, I, I do know I need to fix some of these traces. It's possible that those are actually going to ROM lines. Yeah, this a there's a broken trace here. I know it, but I think that's just the battery. Oh, I just found a solder blob on the board. Yeah, it's quite possible those are broken there. So yeah, I do know there's some broken traces. I don't know how many. But yeah, don't um don't judge all the solder mask damage. Some of those light ones that kind of look look dark depending on the angle. Some of these are just I think solder mask. Those are too shiny to be fresh shorts. Yeah, maybe those were broken. All right, I, I do know if, if all of those are breaks there. That might exceed my ability to repair them because those are... Those, those are... I'll have to investigate. Those are way closer together than a PC board I tried to repair. And I, I have scrapped the PC board that I tried to repair. Well, actually, maybe they aren't closer. If you'll remember this board that I tried to repair. Yeah, this, I scrapped this board. Those traces might even be closer together than that. And I scrapped this board. And this board, I think, on, only had like two broken traces before I butchered it. Also, for the record, I scrapped this board because it really, um, well, I, I invested all the time I wanted to to try to repair it. It's not, it's not a special board. It's, there's like a bazillion other boards like it out there. This board, there's not as many out there, so I will give it a little more effort, but at some point, to calibrate everyone's expectations, I bought this as a parts board. I bought this because the chips in this part of the board look to be free of damage. I bought this board because of that, and because I do have a 2CI board that was actually in excellent visual condition, but has no video. And in fact, you can't plug a new bus card into it as well. However, I have recently discovered at least all of the new bus cards I have in my possession are dead. Which might be why I had no video with new bus cards on my 2CI board. <sighs> also, um, where are those new bus cards now? They're in my scrap pile. Because I I don't even have well, now granted, remember, my scrap pile is not um 
my throwaway pile. It's just where I put boards that are... Um... I, it's it's the pile where I put boards that I, I have deemed are like past past rescuing at my current expertise level. It's also where I put boards that are like parts. So yeah, that that socket seven board it may become parts to fix another socket seven board like it. I might pull it out at some point and um. Fix it. I think Jeremy's asking a question, and I'm just gonna go see if I. Jeremy's asking if I have the sound card for that board. And the only reason I went to go grab the board is because it's not exactly a sound card. Are you referring to this, Jeremy? Is that what you are looking for? Because the thing is, it's not just a sound card. This is actually what you what goes in that slot it's actually a video and sound card yeah it's my spare parts pal okay thomas is telling me there's a guy on a forum that fixed a ci like Potentially mine. I'll I'll look at that forum post. All right, Jeremy, you can uh, if you want to message me about this card. I I have no way of testing it. Well, I guess I could test the video card part of it after straightening out the pins that are kind of a bit bent, but I have no way of testing the sound card. Because remember, I threw the motherboard that this, uh, the only motherboard I have that this would go in in the spare parts pile. Only because it's damaged in a place and that at my current abilities level, I am unable to fix it. So you can message me. I, I suspect you've got a board that you would like to populate that slot so we can talk. I'd hate for that card to go to waste if it actually works. Anyways, yeah, it's no good without the motherboard. Yeah, no, it's not good without the mother. Well, I mean, the, the video card part might work without the motherboard. Because the video card's probably only on the PCI slot. But yeah, that's why I bought the motherboard. It had, it had the video sound card with it. It's not the best model, but... Anyways, yeah, I bought it because it was a pair, and it looked like I could fix the damage, but I, I quickly figured out that the more I tried fixing the damage, the more it seemed like I was causing more damage, so I think the damage to the motherboard is more extensive than I thought because the, um, the apparent broken traces are apparently not the only traces that were broken on it, but Anyways, so the uh, the two CI board, it's not my, it's not, I haven't deemed it spare parts yet. Because actually, I think if I do deem it spare parts, Sloopy wants it. So, um, anyways, well, now if it can save my other two CI board, then I'm taking chips off of it. But I'll have to look at the forum post that Thomas sent and... See if the symptoms of that forum user even match what I was seeing because, yeah, the the basic description is it chimed, but I never got any video. 
but the more nuanced one is it seemed like it would run for a little bit and I could watch things with oscilloscopes and then it would just basically um, stop executing. So it's it's kind of almost like the no video might be there might have been a chip causing the data bus or address bus to go to I don't know. It, it's been a while since I looked at it. I'd have to go watch my live stream to figure out the symptoms. So but the board is not uh, that other 2CI board is not in my possession, so I can't it's not like I can't pull it out and see what it's doing. I mean Maybe if it comes to the point, I'll, I might, could, I could ask the other person to send it back if I get time to work on it, but I'm at least going to let them fix the thing they broke before they send it back to me. So, um, I do kind of have a, you, you break it, you fix it policy. <laughs> so hopefully they'll, uh, I will let them have a chance to do that first. Maybe they might be able to make some headway while they're doing that. They're more than welcome, but then I'll, um, at some point, they'll ask for it back because I would, maybe as I've gotten more repair knowledge, would like to take another stab at it, but I will let them replace the RBV chip on my board at least before I ask for it back. And with that, it's late. Oh, wow. It's even later than I thought it was. So I'm going to uh, call the stream to an end because I do have to work tomorrow. So let me get my finger on the button. Everyone have a great rest of your day. Hope to see you next time. And until then, take care. Computer Ask Start is brought to you by my awesome patrons on Patreon and buy your tips and memberships on coffee. These and other channel supporters make my live streams possible. You too can become a channel supporter with tiers starting at just $1. Don't forget to smash that like button. And if you've liked what you've seen, subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or live stream. And as always, thank you for all your support. I hope to see you next time. And until then, take care.